When you know that God is good, you don't mind praising him. Many times we go through trials and tests, and sometimes we forget about God who's in control of everything, that he's ordering our steps. Sometimes God allows you to get into some trouble just to get you out of it. So today we come to celebrate the king of glory. I'm excited today, y'all. God is so good. Hallelujah. It may be a few of us in here today, but yet the house is filled with the, the presence of God because God is in this place. And let the earth rejoice. Let the people be glad, for our God is an all-consuming fire. He is the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He is the rock upon which we stand. We can magnify him because he's worthy of the praise. Woo, glory to God. I don't know about you, but I come to our church today. I don't know where the musician is today, but that's okay. We make some music with our trumpets because God gave us a voice. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. And God said, I gave you a voice that you can praise me. Well, you ain't got no music. You can praise me if nobody else want to praise me. See, we come into the house of God to lift up the name of Jesus because he's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to thank all of you for coming today, even for our Facebook Family that's viewing today, we welcome you to Redeem Faith Fellowship today. In behalf of Pastor Cornell and Barbara Anderson, we thank you for tuning in to our service today. And I guarantee you're going to hear a word from God that's going to help strengthen you, encourage you, stir you up, even bring forth healing in your spirit. But you got to believe it by faith that God can do it. And I guarantee he will do what he promised to do. Hallelujah. We want to also extend happy anniversary to our pastor him and his wife, they're gone from, from the service today, but I know they're having a good time where they are because where they are, the Spirit of the Lord is, and God is right there with them, helping them celebrate 27 years of marriage. That is awesome. 27 years of marriage. That is a blessing from God to keep them this long, and I pray God, Pastor, if you're listening, I pray God, continue to bless you with many more years to come. Amen. That's right. Give God some praise for that. Amen. We're going to have an opening prayer by uh, Deaconess Vivian this morning. We're going to have our scripture read this morning by Minister Joe. Because I know where the, where the Lord is. He said there is liberty. And we got liberty in the house today to do what God said to do. You know, we're going to do what God said. We're going to get out of here. That's what God told me. He said we're going to do just what he said to do and get out of here. Because, you know, sometimes we get too in a hurry. When God is trying to speak to us sometimes, we rush. But God says, be still and know that I am God. But I want to open up with a song this morning before we have our prayer. I love you, Lord, and I live my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. One more time. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Amen, amen.
the coming and the going. Thank you for allowing us to get up this morning and say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we know we are not worthy, but yet and still, you still love us. We know we are not worthy, but yet and still, you still comfort us and you guide us. And we want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, I want you to reach out to the children, Lord. Reach out to them and just be that wisdom in the in, in their in the ears so they can hear you, Lord. And know that you are God, Lord. And know that in this midst of all this turmoil that they're going through. Because we forget about the kids. We always say what we're going through and what I've been through. But we forget about the babies that's going through this pandemic with us. That's watching their loved ones die. That's watching their mother cry. Watching their father. Being hungry, Lord. So I want to lift them up today, Lord. And I want to say touch them right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want you to reach over with the Savior. We need faith, Lord, and I want you to cover them in the name of Jesus. Cover every member from the youngest to the oldest, Lord. Touch them to those that are not here, those that are sick and standing here, those that are in the Lord, I want you to touch them, Lord. Let them know that you are who you say you are. Be there for them. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I acknowledge thee for Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing for the, our scripture today. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the scripture this morning. Amen. You know, this, this uh, last couple of weeks has been a trial some week for myself. Been having to deal with a lot of pain in my left uh, shoulder coming from the neck again. I was like, God, not again. I said, we ain't going through this. <laughs> but I mean, it's been tremendous pain. But I found out throughout the week, the more I've been going on the prayer line, and keeping my mind consecrated on God, in spite of the pain, I keep pressing in. See, the key, like the scripture says, you have whatever you say. How? By faith. And when God began to speak to me the last couple of weeks going through all that pain, the Lord said, it's your faith 
that's going to produce the healing in your body. He said, you keep doing what you know to do. Keep praying. Keep believing. Keep standing on the word. And the more you stand on his word, he said, healing going to manifest. You know, I still have some pain. But last night, I was with my fiance, and we, we were sitting there going through the Bible, me, her, and one of my cousins in Chicago. And I was sharing with them some revelation what God gave me about tests, about tribulation, trials, and tests. Sometimes God will put you on a trial. He'll do that sometimes. He'll put you on trial to see where you're standing. And then he'll not only that, he'll allow the test to come to, to prove your abilities. But then when the, 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 when the test, the, tri the, it said the trials, the tests, and the tribulation, all those things, tribulation comes along with a purpose of producing patience. God says many times we get impatient. When we go through different challenges in our lives, we give up too quick. Why? Because we get frustrated. We get tired. We're hurting. So we just give up too quick. And God is speaking today to remind us that when you're going through, you keep on going through. Don't stop midstream going through. Because the test, the trials, and the tribulations, it builds you up. And it begins to put out your character that God defines who you are when you get into his presence. I'm excited today, y'all. I can't help myself because God has been too good to me. See, I, I said, I'm coming in the house today. I said, pain, you're not going to stop me today because I have an assignment to do. And on my assignment, you're not included today. So I said, pain, you got to loose me today. And in the name of Jesus, I walked in this house today with such a joy in my spirit, a praise in my heart. I said, God, I thank you that this pain ain't dominating me today. Because I speak what God says, have faith in God. And I guarantee every time you operate, every time you move in faith, God gets stirred up on his throne. He said, my child is crying out to me, so I got to get up off my throne. I got to go see about my child because they need me to move in that situation. I don't know about you today, but I come with some joy today. See, sometimes we come into the house of God, we come miserable. We come hurting. We come letting the stuff bombard our minds and stop our praise. But I come to praise the Lord. Because God told me today, when I got up this morning, he said, you open up your mouth. Because I gave you a voice to praise me. He said, when you praise me, the devil got to get out the way. I don't know about you, but somebody today is, God is speaking to. You've been letting the devil get in your way. But God says today, you got to tell the devil, get out of my way. And I guarantee God will move in the nick of time. You need a blessing in your heart. You need joy in your spirit. You need peace in your mind. God says, when you praise me, I'm going to move by my spirit. And my spirit going to fill you up with such a joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, give God some praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. See, I don't know about you, but something is stirring up in the atmosphere. Come on, I brought a praise with me today. I brought the anointing with me today. And God said, the anointing destroys the yoke. And when you open up your mouth, God says, I'm going to fill you up with my spirit today because somebody needs a refreshing. This is the house of refreshing. Redeem faith. Check this out. God says, redeem faith. Why? Because you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And you got to have faith 
to believe that you've been redeemed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's stay in worship. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, God, for bringing us this far, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you, God, for never letting us go, Lord Jesus. God, and we just thank you, God, for being who you are, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. I just want to say 
Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Say, Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Say, Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Say, Lord, you are good. Say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Say, people from every nation, people from every nation and tongue, from, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we worship, we worship you, you, for who you are. Come on, let's say it one more time. Say, we worship, we worship you. Hallelujah, 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 we worship, we worship you, for who you are. Who you are. Say, you are, you are God. Come on, put your hands in this place. All right. Yes, you are. 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 Yeah. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time. You are good. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time. You are, you are good, good Jesus. You are good all the time. All the time. All the time. You are good. You are good. When I wake up in the morning, you are good. You are good all the time. All the time. All the time. You are good. Yeah. You are good. You are good all the time. When I'm in a hospital. All the time. When I'm on my sick bed. You are good. You are good. You are good. You are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You all act like y'all know God is good. See, I don't know, have you tasted and seen that the Lord is good? The Bible says, blessed is the man who put their trust in the Lord. That's why I love that song, you are good all the time. Because my family don't be good all the time. My friends don't be good all the time. My job don't be good all the time. But one thing I can bank on, that God is good all the time. All the time. He promises that surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. That you may dwell. You know what that means? So I searched that scripture over and over and over. And I thought about it. I said, God, what are you talking about dwelling? That means to camp out, to abide, to settle in. 
And God said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life that you will settle, camp out, dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. That's exciting news, y'all. That's exciting news. Just to know I can rest in God's presence. Doesn't matter what's going on on the outside. God's still stirring on the inside. He still gives us peace in our storms. He gives us comfort in our sad hour. When our body's afflicted, he's our doctor. We want to keep Pastor Terry lifted up, Elder Cole, Crummy Cole lifted up. These two are battling with cancer. And many other people I, I have turned, found out this week who are fighting cancer. And I believe that a lot of these illnesses are being triggered by this coronavirus. But one thing about it all, we still know Jesus. He's the doctor in the sick room. He promises that when you call on the name of the Lord, that he will heal you. And not just heal, but deliver you from all afflictions. See, that's shouting news today. To know that God will deliver you when you call on that great name. Hallelujah. Thank you for that worship this morning. I tell you, when you come into the house prepared, that just add on to the fire. <laughs> that just adds to the fire you already got going on the inside. You know, this week we had a radio show. And, and, and uh, Prophetess April was on our show again this week. And I tell you, that woman is a firehouse. God's anointing. It flows like a river from her. And when she opened up her mouth, we were talking about women in the Bible. And we also discussed about prophetess that you don't hear of in the Bible. So we begin to talk about how do you know that you got a word from God as a prophetess. It lines up with God's word. And the sister just brought that into clarity on the radio show. So if you didn't get a chance to hear it, it's going to be airing this coming week because they didn't play it last week, the, the uh, current show. They're behind a week. But it was an error on the engineer's part. But it's okay. Because the show that was played the week before, we got a whole lot of feedback and confidence from that show. They said they love that April lady on there. They said that woman is fire. And I tell you, that, that's something to rejoice about. When you have a family member in your house, that's doing the work of the Lord, unashamed. We ought to rejoice with them who rejoice, weep with those who weep, continue to give God the praise for what he's doing in all of our lives. Because she's doing what she's doing because God gave me the heart to invite her. One thing about me, many of you know that, I'm not a selfish person. If God tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. We're going to get ready for our offering in a minute. But when God tells me to do something, I don't second guess it. I pray about it. And when I get a sure word of prophecy from the Lord, it lines with God's word. And then I said, okay, God, now is the time. And I called her up. I first talked to my, co my host on the radio show, Pastor Owens. I said, I got this mighty woman of God, you know, that we can invite her on show. Because he even brought her up to me. He said, Hey, how, that message you sent me that, that that lady from your church spoke about on Facebook, he said, that really touched my heart. I'd like to get her on our show. I said, really? I said, well, praise God, because that was in my spirit, the same thing you just asked me about. And we came together. We prayed about it. And I called the sister up, and she openly received the invitation. You don't know how God is going to use anybody in your life to promote you for the kingdom of God. We have to always be available. The song said, Lord, I'm available to you. We have to be available for God to use us anytime he chooses. Sometimes we miss our blessing because we get stubborn. We get in the way. God is talking today, y'all. He's, he's sure, stirring up our hearts to get our attention. Because he wants us to know when you make yourself available, I said the other week, when you get out of the way, 
God gets in the way. When you get out of the way, God will get in the way. But guess what happens? When he gets in the way, he leaves the way. That means you take the back burner and God says, I'm going to guide you in the path that I ordained for you to walk in. And all you do is just walk in it with joy and peace in your heart, knowing that it was the Lord that God brought you out for such a time as this. Amen. Prepare your hearts for our giving this morning. The Bible says when you give, don't give grudgingly. Don't give out of necessity. But give as you purpose in your heart. And the Lord promises that when you give in obedience to his word, in Malachi, he said, well, man, rob God. He said, well, you and you have robbed me in tithes and offerings. But God said, don't you know that I can open up the windows? He didn't say window. Windows. That means more windows of opportunity. More windows of blessings for you. God says he would do that because of your obedience. Uh, Minister Joe, can you get my envelope on there and put it in there, please? It's right there on the seat. Thank you. He said he would bless you tremendously. Then the scripture says when you give, it will come back to you. Good measures pressed down shaking together, and running over. And that's dealing with harvest. If you study the scriptures, you'll find out that during the time of harvest season, they will gather the, the fruit in their, their garment. They'll hold their garments in a position as a basket, and they will shake it up. And God says, he will do that for you and bless you. Hallelujah. We got some giving music over here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We put down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Bless, bless. I'm going to tell God he's blessed. Bless, bless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the fields. We're blessed when we come and when you go. We pull down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed, blessed, blessed. Everybody, blessed, blessed. Are you blessed, blessed? Oh, yeah, yeah, blessed, blessed. Oh, we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the fields. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We pull down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Why don't you stand, please, all over the room? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that we're blessed. Deacon, why don't you pray over the offering today? Amen. Come on, give God a shout in the house today. Amen. Say it like you mean it. Amen. You know why you're saying amen? Because God going to bless you in return. Amen. So, you know how we do it every Sunday? Get ready, get ready, get ready. Lord, 
enlarge my territory. Come on, say it like you get some room. You got to spread out some wings. Say, Lord, enlarge my territory. Come on, say it like with authority. Lord, enlarge my territory. One more time. Lord, enlarge my territory. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know that God is able? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ex 
exceedingly, abundantly, above all, all you can ask or think, according to what he said he will do he's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on God cause he won't give up on you he's able how many know that he's able in this place yeah Take his hand off. Say he's able. 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 He's able
Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's a provider. He's a provider. He's my provider. He's my provider. He's my healer. 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 He Cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. Hey, cause he won't give up on you. No. Oh, he won't give up on you. No. So don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you he's able i need about five people to just say he's able 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 say he's able i know he's able to fix the lord he's able now let's bless him in this place you got one more song dd you got one more song Hallelujah. Able. He's able. Yes, he is. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I mean, you know, God is able today. Come on, give him some praise. He's able. Sometimes we get in a hurry, we give up too quick. But God is reminding us that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. That's the God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want to say thank you. Lord, I want to say thank you. Oh, Lord, I want to say thank you for all you've done for me. <laughs> Ain't God good? Lord, I want to say thank you. <laughs> Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, Lord, I want to say thank you, hey, Lord, I want to say thank you for all you've done for me, me. Me, Lord, you've done for me. Hey, for all you've done for me. 
You know, I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. But Lord, but Lord, but Lord, you told old death, you told death to behave. You touched my body. You woke me up again. And Lord, I just want to tell you thank you for all you've done for me. So I just say, Lord, I want to say thank you. Come on, tell them thank you today. Lord, I want to say thank you. You've been so good to me, Lord. I want to say thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For all you've done for me. For all you've done for me, yeah. For all you've done for me. For all you've done for me, Jesus, hey. For all you've done for me. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, shine it on my cushion, need my heart see. Won't you stand in your feet all over the room? Oh, shine it on my heart see. Oh, shut up, I see the under the shade. Oh, that about cushion, need my heart see. You know, sometimes when we can't sleep at night, that song comes into my spirit, and I begin to just cry out to God. I said, Lord, what is it? Why am I restless? And sometimes God will wake me up and have me get in the word. And he'll speak one word. And I'll go back to sleep. See, God knows how to get our attention. When we try to ignore, ignore that still, small voice, when God is speaking to you, we try to ignore it because we don't want to hear it. But God will keep on tugging at your heart until you get up. It might be 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. He's going to keep on tugging at you until you get up. Because I need to speak to you. I need to make love to you. See, God makes love through his word to us. Then there's nothing strange. Because if you love God with an intimacy, God says, I'll make love to you through my word. And as God began to speak, God is speaking this morning. I'm shifting your life. I'm shifting your life. You've been comfortable. You've been struggling. You've been holding on to addictions and habits. You have secrets in your heart. But God says, I'm shifting your life today. I'm shifting your life today. I'm pulling out the strongholds. See, I, I've done almost a year series on strongholds on Facebook Live. And each lesson got more powerful and more intense because God was conveying a message to me. I don't know about you, anybody that heard the lessons, but he spoke specifically to me about strongholds in my life. That if you're going to be a man of God and stand before my people declaring my word, you better come correct. You better come correct. God's speaking to somebody in this house today. You got to come to God correct. God says, I'm breaking the shackles off your mind. I'm breaking the strongholds off your heart. And I'm releasing the anointing over you today. I don't know if you can feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I'm, I'm so hot up here right now. God says the anointing. It's being released over your life right now. 
He said, I'm meeting you right where you are, in that place, in that place where those struggles been, in that place where those habits been, in that place where those struggles got a hold of you. He said, in that place, I'm stripping it out of your life because I want you to come correct before me. He said, I open up my heart before you to invite you to come into my house. He says, when you come into my house, he said, there's room for everybody in my house. Doesn't matter what it is. And I found out that sometimes our rebellion will cause us to get sick. Our rebellion will cause us to get sick. And I asked God about this. One day I was in prayer. I said, Lord, why is this pain keep coming back? He said, because there was rebellion in your heart. So you try to ignore it. You try to overlook it. You try to preach over it. But he said, because of the struggle, I released the anointing over you and I showed you grace. Said my grace has carried you through the toughest time in your life. When the enemy thought he had you, I ordained you for such a time as this. I put my spirit in you for such a time as this. He said, because I want you to come correct. You got to come correct, people. God is shifting our lives today. Because he sees what we're going through. He said, I'm a God who's acquainted with your sorrows. I feel your hurts and pains. I feel your discontentment. I feel your heart when it's worrying and hurting and burning down. I feel it upon myself, but I'm releasing the anointing to lift up the yoke off your neck to destroy the burdens in your life. Because I love you. Because I love you. Because I love you. So all over the room, I want you to lift your hands. They okay over there. They okay. They doing the work of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the anointing in this place today. I thank you for the shepherd of this house who left me, oh God, in assignment to fulfill his duty for the church today. And I thank you, God, that I received a double portion of the anointing. But today, God, I lift up your people in the house today, God, who've been worrying, who've been struggling, who've been in pain and discontentment, who've been burning down with society, whose families are in trouble and in turmoil. Many lost their lives. Many are dealing with the pandemic. Some lost their the electricity in Texas, God. People froze to death, God. But yet, God, some still purpose in their heart to come into the house of God. And I ask God right now that the anointing will cover every person in this room, even those on Facebook watching today, God, that you cover them right now, God, with your spirit. That you destroy the assignment of the enemy that's come to buffet them. To stop them in their track. And I thank you, Lord God, that the anointing is healing the brokenness that the anointing is lifting up a bowed down head. That the anointing, God, is covering them as a blanket. That every 
need. Every need. Financially. Spiritually. Physically. Mentally. That you would supply. According to your word. We even pray now God for rededication. For those who have backslidden in their hearts, God. That you bring them to conviction right now. To get back into right standing. In right relationship with you, God. In the name of Jesus. And we pray today, dear God. For souls to be saved. Those who don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that your spirit do the drawing today, God. That you draw them to a house somewhere to hear the gospel. Being on television, let them hear the gospel of salvation. Just like you told Zacchaeus, the tax collector, when he was in a sycamore tree, looking for Jesus because he heard he was passing by. God, do not pass us by. But when you came to the place where he was, you looked up and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for the day I must abide in your house. God, you brought salvation to his whole household. And I thank you, Lord God, that whoever have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church will receive this word today, God. That you have given me to speak to your people that will bring transformation of mind, body, soul, and spirit. That our lives will line up with your word by the power of the Holy Spirit I bind every demonic force, every assault, every assignment, every confusion. I bind it in Jesus' name and send it back to the pit of hell where it come from. And I thank you, God, that the chains are broken right now, that the burdens are lifted, yokes are destroyed because of the anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing for the reading of the scripture. I'm going to read one scripture, but there's several scriptures we're going to go through today. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Kim, Sister Kim, God heard you. God says he heard you. And he's shifting the atmosphere around you. So the enemy thought he was going to keep you bound in a spiritual prison. Just like Peter, when he was in jail, he had 17 soldiers guarding him. God says he sent angels, a legion of angels to surround you. That every time the enemy would try to come in against you to take you backwards, God says, Don't be hindered by your past anymore. But as I have brought you out, God says you move forward by faith in the purpose God brought you out for ministry upon your life. You have a calling on your life. The reason why the enemy attacks you so hard, God says he calls you to be an evangelist. And the enemy has been attacking that call upon your life to blind you from the truth. But God says he's stirring a hunger in your heart for the word of God. That your eyes will be open to be flooded with the light, to know the hope and the measure of God's grace that's upon the calling on you. And God says you're going to walk as a free woman from this day forward and not go back to the chains anymore. I don't do this too often. I really don't. But when God is moving like he's doing today, 
I must obey him. I must obey him. Oh, Shantabasia. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Sister T, God says he's healing you. He's healing you. So don't let your mind think he's not healing you. So a lot of times your illnesses is because of the way you think. But God says, I'm shifting your thinking today by the power of the anointing. He says he's releasing a fire upon you. And that fire is an all-consuming fire. God says, I am that fire that's going to burn inside of you. And I'm going to draw out the sickness and the disease and cancer shall not return. Because God says, I healed you with my anointing fire. But you got to believe it by faith that it is so. And God says, when you walk, get into the word, find you a scripture that you love the most. Begin to pray that scripture over yourself. God says, when you open your mouth, he said, the scripture that you love the most is going to begin to talk to you. The scripture you love the most is going to fill your heart with such a joy and excitement. And he says, every time the enemy try to put doubt in your mind, he says, that word is going to remind you that God has not forgot about you. That's what God says for you. As your husband stands next to you, God says, the same fire is upon him. And the fire is going to burn in both of you. And that fire is going to heal both of you because you've both been afflicted. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. God says, I deliver you out of them all. Receive it by faith. Believe it by faith. Stand on it by faith. Do not doubt but believe in thy heart whatsoever thing that thou sayest, it will surely come to pass. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hebrews 11th chapter, verse 1. Hebrews 11th chapter, verse 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped. With an E-D, it means something you thought about a while ago, that you hoped for a while ago. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. It said, for by it... The elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You may be seated. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Then in Genesis, Genesis. chapter 1. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. In verse 1 says, in the beginning, <clears throat> God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And darkness he called night. 
and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be firmness in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmness, divided the waters, and were and said that were under the infirmities from the waters which were above the firmness, and it was so. <clears throat> and God called the firmness heaven, and the evening and morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry lands appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and then gathered together the waters he called the he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herbs yielding seed and fruit trees yielding fruit after its kind whose seed in it in itself upon the earth. And it was so seed after its kind. And it says, in the trees yielding fruit in, in whose seed was in itself and after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and morning was the third day. And God said, let light uh, be there. Uh, it said, and God said, let there be light in the firmness in the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them bring be a sign. And he said for a season and for a day and years and let them um, be for light in the firmness in the heavens and give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule by day and the lesser light to rule by night made the stars also. And God set them in the firmness of the heavens and give light unto the earth. He's talking about the stars. And, and said to rule over the day and, th and over the night. And he divided the lights from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning was the fourth day. And God said that the waters bring forth abundantly in moving creatures that has life and fowls and that may fly above the earth and open firmness of the heaven. Then he went on. He said, then God created the great wells and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. And every winged fowl of, of his kind, God saw it was good. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowls multiply the earth. And the evening and morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures after its kind, cattle and creeping things, and the beasts of the earth and the, after its kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after its kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the earth and the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every cattle and over over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created so God created man in his own image, and in the image of God he created him, male and female, he create, created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful uh, and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every thing, living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have g given you every herb and er bearing seed, which is upon the face of the, all the yield, it's uh, upon all the earth, and every tree in which the uh, fruit tr of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. And the beast, it's in every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, and everything that creeps upon the earth, and wherein there is life. And I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And the reason why I read all these different scriptures beginning in Genesis is because my subject today is unshakable faith. Unshakable faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, it starts out saying, now faith is the suffering of things that you already hope for. You look, read the scripture, it's something past tense. It's not talking about something present, it's something you've already been thinking about, something you've been praying about, and you've been trusting God to do in your life. And God said, it's something you hope for. Then he says, it's a sub the substance of things not seen, the evidence of things not seen. So the evidence of things not seen means it has not appeared yet what you hope for, but you still believe in God, he's going to bring it to pass in your life. So God says, so then it says, and the worlds were framed, boy, how? By faith. So God created the heaven and the earth. Everything I just listed here from Genesis chapter 1, verse 
verse 1 through uh, 31 is everything that God originated and he put into action by the act of faith. If God did not believe in himself and when he began to speak something to existence, it would have never came to be. So when God says he's going to put the earth, he's going to put the water, he's going to put the creatures, he's going to put man and woman. And, and, and then when he talks about creating male and female, he hadn't even created, created the woman yet. The woman didn't come into existence until chapter 2. So when God spoke this thing into existence, he said, by faith, all these things shall be. So God said, and it was good and very good. So God said, in six days, I created everything that you see in life today. He said, because I am a self-existing God, I'm Jehovah Shama. My presence is everywhere at the same time. I can speak a word in your life and change your destiny. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. But the problem comes in. In order to have unshakable faith you got to know what faith really is faith is something that operates by your intellect but it, pro, pro, it produces within the heart when God spoke these things he had to think about it follow me now when God spoke these things, he had to know with an assurance what he was going to produce in the earth. So when God said, now faith is the substance, he talking about having a strong, unshakable belief in that God's ability to do what you've been praying for. Some people have been praying 20 years for God to deliver them in certain areas in their life, and it never happens because you have shakable faith. When God gives us a word to stir us up, to change our thinking, there's apprehension. There's resistance. There's rebellion. There's stubbornness. There's idolatry. There's witchcraft. There's the spirit of the Antichrist. And the God said in his word, and he spoke to Timothy, Paul told to Timothy, Timothy said, man, he said, you know what? There are many Antichrists in the world. He said, many of them in the world. He said, the Antichrist was coming, but he's already here. He said, there, and there are many followers that follow after his teaching. So you don't know the word for yourself. An Antichrist can come along and tell you something that sounds like God, but it, it defiles God's word, and it leads you astray. It leads you from your conviction of your salvation and dependent on God. So God says, that we got to know without a shadow of a doubt that my belief is stern, is rooted, is grounded in the Lord. So if anyone come preaching any other gospel, Jesus said, they're not of me. He said, those who follow me will keep my commandments, not only keep my commandments, but they're going to love one another as I have loved them. And the problem comes in, we don't love one another because we don't love ourselves. I'm not going to be long. I'm not going to be long. I'm just doing what God told me to do. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says we walk by faith. We walk by faith not by sight. A lot of folk in the house of God been going out of tradition to church. Your traditions, Jesus had a problem with folk in their tradition. He said your traditions, it negates and it nullifies the power of God because you're stuck in your tradition. And the God is trying to shake us up today to break your cycle of tradition. I have a tradition of going to church because my mama went to church. I got a tradition of going to church because my daddy went to church. I got a tradition of going to church because my grandparents went to church. And so I don't go for myself. I go because they went to church. Tradition. Your religious belief 
will stop you from walking in truth and righteousness. God don't want you to be religious. He wants you to be a child of God. Walking in truth and righteousness. That's why in John 14 and 6, he said, I am the way. We walk by faith, not by sight. Why? Because I am the way and the truth and the life. I cannot walk by faith if I'm walking by sight. See, a lot of times your vision will trick you up. You can have blurred vision. I take my glasses off. I can see something. See, a person look like something else because I can't see without my glasses. A lot of folk in the house of God can't see without their spiritual glasses. God is talking today. You got to get into position when you begin to get in the word of God and get the word inside of you and the word begin to marinate in your heart and stir you up in your faith to believe hope against hope that what God spoke in his word, I'm going to stand there without a shadow of doubt. Nobody going to turn my faith. I remember an old scholar named Smith Wiggleworth. This man was a plumber. But yet he found Jesus. And when he found Jesus, he started going around healing folk. Sometimes he punched people because God told him to punch them. And, and when he punched this one man, he said, why you hit me? He said, because God told me that your healing's in the punch. A lot of times God does things that doesn't seem normal. He'll do things that's out normal because he's trying to get your attention. We get distracted by everything around us. And God says, I'm trying to turn your vision back to me. A lot of folk have double vision in the house of God. You can't see. You can't see God if he stood before you because you're blinded by yourself. Your selfish ways gets in the ways of God and it makes you do things that God doesn't want you to do and you don't care about it. How can a child of God be on Facebook glorifying their sin. Come on, think about it. You're supposed to be a representation of Christ, but you get around unsaved folk and you let them have the spirit that's in them get inside of you to lure you into a bait of Satan to begin to magnify your sin. That's shakable faith. Because you don't have no true faith. True faith would tell you that if I'm out of order with God, God's word tell me the just shall live by faith. So if I'm the just, that means I've been acquitted. I've been forgiven of all my sins. I've been made right with God. So if God said the just shall live by faith, guess what happens? It doesn't matter what folks say about me. That's the old man. I'm a new creature in Christ. A friend of mine was preaching last Sunday, and I heard his message. He was talking about how people want to associate you with your nickname that's from the old nature. You read in the Bible, God changed Abram to Abraham because he said, by faith, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. He said, because I'm going to change your name because your name is going to represent what I'm doing in your life. I'm going to call you the father of multitudes. He changed Jacob's name because Jacob wrestled with God and Jacob was a trickster. Jacob saw Esau's birthright because he was a trickster. And God says, guess what's going to happen? Because you prevailed with God and you didn't give up, you kept on. God struck him in the side, made him limp. But when he began to limp, God says, I, he said, I'm not going to let you go, God, till you bless me. How many times do God have to put a limp on us in order us to hold on? God does things in our lives and let the enemy afflict you in certain ways to get you to hold on. But because of your faith is shakable, you look at the problem, you glorify it. You look at the situation, you magnify it. The Bible says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. So that means we got to come into agreement to magnify God above our problems. 
So because he wrestled with God, God said, you prevail. I'm going to change your name to Israel because you wrestled with God and you prevail. We got to get to the place without playing church and know with personal conviction. Check this one out. James chapter 1 verse 6. It says, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Shakeable faith. When you come to God and you're trusting God to do a thing in your life, you got to know within your heart that God's going to do it. You cannot allow the enemy to put you in a place where you negate God's word. Say, God, we're going to work for me. Uh, you know, I tried that already. God don't care about me. God, God, he see what I'm going through. You know what my children are experiencing. God don't care about me. But God says, by faith, you're going to have whatsoever you say. Jesus starts out, Mark 11, chapter verse 22, and Jesus said to his disciples, what? Have faith in God. So there's an indication that the foundation of your faith is not resting on the wisdom of man or in yourself, but is resting in God. So when God says that, then he says, he said, but him that asks in faith, nothing wavering. Why? Because when you waver, you're doubting. When you're wavering, you're not sure of what you're asking God for. You got to know what you're asking God for because you better be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. So he says here, for he that wavereth, that means, I remember years ago when the prophetic movement, the charismatic movement was going on, they would have great evangelists come to the city from other, other states, even other countries. Folk would flock to those different places where they were to hear word. Girl, come over here. Man, come over here. Cause they got a prophetic word over there. They gonna speak a word. You go to that church because this, this is a great revival going on. And you only the word. You go there. So folk run over there. Oh, there's another one over on that side of the country, on uh, the town. Go to, let's go to this church on tomorrow night because they gonna have a word over there too for us. So you run over there. So you're running everywhere seeking a word, but you ain't seeking God. You're seeking everybody else for what they got, but you're not seeking God. And he said, that person, he said, like the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Why? You would go down to the lakefront, and you see how the, the wind, when it's strong on a certain days, it began to draw that, begin to push that water. The water began to just, just wave. A lot of waves begin to bounce up and down in that water, Right? That's how your faith is. He's talking about you got, you got shakeable faith. It ain't grounded. So if your faith ain't grounded in God, amen, baby. <laughs> if your faith ain't grounded in God, God says, you ain't going to get nothing from him. He's like, devil mind man is unstable in all his ways. So you, you be double minded. That means you can't make your decision. Uh, I was reading just the other day, Elijah, he was speaking to King Ahab, and he said to him, he said, Oh, King Ahab came to him and said, Elijah, are you one that's stirring up trouble in Israel? He said, am I the only true prophet in Israel? So he knew what he was. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? And so he began to ask a question. Why halt ye between two opinions? You know what that means? Two decisions. You know what God said. But your flesh said, no, we ain't going to do it. And God says, well, if you walk by faith and not by sight, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to open the windows of heaven and begin to fill your house. Your flesh said, no, that ain't possible for me because everybody else seems to get blessed. I don't never get blessed because it's like every time I try to call on God for something, he will never do it for me because he, he take his time for me. Like, God don't care about me. He ain't listening to me. We do it all the time. We talk ourselves out of the promise that God has for us. So God said, so, so, so Elijah said, why halt ye between two opinions? He said, if God be the God of Israel, then serve him. But if God be the God of Baal, then you worship him. So in other words, you need to know who you're serving. Make up your mind today that from this day forward, 
I'm going to serve the true and living God. I don't care what folks say to me. I don't care what's going on around me. I'm going to stand on God's word and allow the word of God to lead and guide me into pastor's green. One more scripture, and I'm almost done. John eleven forty, Jesus said unto her, Said not I unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. God promises that if we believe in the words that Jesus speaks to us, we will see the glory of God. It's a guarantee because God promises in his word. Mark chapter 9, verse 23, and Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. That's a guarantee. That's a sure word of prophecy. That's spoken in God's word for you today. You got to believe without a shadow of a doubt and have your own personal conviction that regardless of what people say, I'm going to keep on standing on God's word. And then James 1 and 3 says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh. It's working to produce to manufacture patience. You need patience today. The trying of your faith is manufacturing patience in you according to the word of God. But you got to know within yourself that when trouble comes, don't get a bad attitude because things are not happening the way you want it to happen. Don't get a bad attitude because Folk talking about you behind your back and you heard about it. Don't get a bad attitude because things ain't going the way you want it to go. It's like every time I try to, try to get blessed and try to do what God tells me to do, it's like I keep losing out. God says every promise for his people is yes and amen. Yes and amen. Why not you stand with me? Every promise that God has for you today is yes and amen. You must have in your daily walk a stern personal conviction that regardless of what happens around you, on the inside, I'm going to have an unshakable faith. I'm going to stand on the promises, the prophetic word that God spoke to me. I'm going to keep on trusting God with all my heart, my soul, my mind, my strength. I'm going to love him with every fiber of my being. And God promises that everything he has spoken to you, it will come to pass in your life in this season. But you got to believe it. You got to trust God at his word. You got to Thank God at his word for what he spoke to you and believe God at his word that it's going to happen to me. I'm a millionaire. You tell yourself, I'm a millionaire. You have a millionaire mentality. Because God changed your thinking to begin to see millionaire mentality. So whatever it is you're trusting God to do today, it might be healing. It might be comfort through the loss of a loved one. It might be pain in your body. God says today is the day of salvation. Salvation is an all-inclusive word that includes everything you're going through. Because he is the savior of the world. And because he's the savior, he says, why are you yet crying out? I have heard you. That business that seem to be struggling, the business that you're looking to start. It doesn't matter what it is. Get your mind on that one particular thing that God spoke to you to do. And we're going to pray and we're going to dismiss. But I want you to get your mind on that one particular thing that you're trusting and believing God to do in your, that you've been hoping for for a very long time. And I want you to believe in your heart and do not doubt that what you're asking God for, that he would do it. 
Somebody need an increase, financial increase. God says he's going to do it. Somebody needs healing. God says he's going to do it. Somebody needs deliverance. God says he's going to do it. No matter what it is, he says, I'm going to do it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this word today, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, for your presence reminding us that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Even in your shadow, it benefits. And God, I thank you today that we're resting in your presence right now, God. Those particular things that your people are believing you for, God, I come in faith, decreeing and declaring it shall happen in this season. I come against the spirit of apprehension, the spirit of doubt, fear, and unbelief. I break the shackles of failure. I break the chains of bondage over our minds that we will have a clear conscience, free of sin, to believe that hope against hope, that what you promise, that you're able to perform it. And I thank you, Lord God, that somebody is being healed right now, God. Healed in their faith, oh God. Healed in their mentality. Healed in their bodies. Healed in their hearts. They're being healed in their conversation right now, God, because the anointing it's flowing in the atmosphere. And I thank you, Lord God, that your word that goeth forth from your mouth will not come back empty, but it will prosper whereunto you sent it. It shall do that which you please because you're God all by yourself. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to open the door to the church. You don't have a church home. At this time, before we go, if anyone need to give their life to the Lord, salvation, you need salvation, you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, at this time, I extend the invitation to you. Don't leave this place without getting to know Jesus. Because it's not guaranteed when you leave this place, you're going to live. But God has an assurance that if something did happen to you, to be absent in the body, is to be present with the Lord. We find that there is none. So, Lord, we thank you for your presence, O oh God, for the word that going forth today, O oh God, that would not return to you void. But I thank you, Lord God, that the word will begin to penetrate in our hearts and our minds, O oh God, to remind us over and over to have unshakable faith. Now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in us from this day forward, in Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.